Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the world's best investing podcast. Last week, we saw AMD stock skyrocket based on news that IBM was using AMD's FPGA technology to run a quantum error correcting algorithm and that AMD FPGAs outperformed any other single compute device on earth by tenfold. It's huge news. But guess what? Analysts just continue re-rating AMD based on headlines, but they continue to fundamentally misunderstand the platform. As I've been saying for years, including here on YouTube, AMD's FPGA technology is the secret weapon that is going to take this company to new heights. FPGAs are a very, very big story. And last week, people were only really just seeing, seeing the story rear its head. Fundamentally, this platform is tremendously powerful. And it's the thing that makes me think that AMD is going to be bigger than NVIDIA. However, before we get into that in depth, just know that I have 40 coupons available to obtain lifetime access to my course and community or future versions of the course too, because I'm constantly iterating on that. 500 plus members that have taken the, the course already for just $329 instead of $399, so essentially 400. There's only 40 coupons left, code AMD at checkout, link in the show's footnotes. Now back to FPGAs. FPGAs are essentially like an ASIC, but they change shape depending on the workload they have to perform. And so you can't beat a piece of hardware that changes shape and is able to optimize the workload at the circuit level. In the end, circuits have to take on the shape, essentially, of the algorithm they are running. And so the specific requirement, and this is where it gets really, really interesting, and this made me even more bullish than I've been on AMD for the past few years now. What made me very bullish and sort of the specific requirement of this algorithm was an extremely low latency. You need the workload to run very quickly in order to stabilize quantum compute workloads. And what's interesting is that the difference between the latency we have today in AI workloads and the one required to stabilize a quantum compute workload is like an order of magnitude. It's just huge. What does this tell you? It basically tells you that AMD FPGAs have this massive, massive capability to outperform any single compute engine on earth in terms of making inferences. So you guys know inference has been all the rage for the past six months. The market is coming around the idea that AMD truly has an advantage, but it's focused more on the sort of GPU data center side of things. As we've seen Oracle, Meta, OpenAI lean into AMD's instinct roadmap. However, this is the big deal. This is what people are really missing. So we've been talking about AI at the edge for years, and we've been talking about how physical AI is going to be even bigger, probably, than data center AI, which is really where everyone's mind was over the past few years. AI is moving out into the edge. And so what you need is a device that is capable of performing inferences in this very low latency manner, do so very cheaply, and is also able to in order to truly provide a very low latency, you need a piece of hardware that, that's able to change shape because you're going to be making inferences with different neural networks over time. And these neural nets are going to have different shapes. And so if you are able to optimize at the circuit level, no one can really beat you. And so what we saw with the AMD deal basically is a, it's, it's, it's a demonstration of just how powerful AMD's FPGAs are. They outperformed everyone for this particular algorithm. And as I was saying, this algorithm has requisites which are just far above and beyond what we are seeing now with AI and probably far above and beyond whatever AI brings us over the next two or three years. It's just not going to be, I mean, the latency is eventually going to get there. But right now, this technology positions AMD to beat everyone when it comes to inference, both at the edge and in data centers. Because guess what? AMD's chiplet platform is all about combining different compute engines. And so what we're going to see is FPGAs be deployed across the entire end-to-end -end AI solution. We're going to see them in data centers, the very large ones. We're going to see them in the small ones, medium-sized ones, you know, in, you know uh, in the theme of distributed inference that Oracle talks about a lot. We're going to see it in PCs. We already do. AMD's AI PCs are basically CPUs and FPGAs. And then we're going to see it in devices. And... Why does this position AMD to essentially take the whole market? It's because no one else has this technology. So the FPGA market was made essentially of two players. One was Silinx a few years ago, and secondly, Altera. And so Intel acquired Altera and buried it deep within the company. And Altera hasn't really gone anywhere since. And AMD's Silinx was the undisputed leader in the market. 
Silinx was to FPGAs, what NVIDIA was until six months ago to data center GPUs. And so AMD took that technology, onboarded it into its portfolio, and now people just don't have a way to catch up. You really have to go through all the motions that Silinx went for, went through during for years and years and years to bring this technology. And then in order to truly leverage it to do useful stuff with, with AI and, and bring that piece of compute to the market in a way which is truly revolutionary, you have to also catch up with AMD's chiplet platform. So you see how the moat has been quietly compounding. And that's why I keep talking about AMD being the machine that's able to personalize chips at a marginal cost and bring, here we go, bring a total cost of ownership to a growing volume of workloads as soon as they emerge because competitors just can't do that. So what we're going to see increasingly over the next few years is inference pick up. And I was, as I was saying, all across the AI value chain, what customers are really going to care about is inference. They're not going to care about parameters. They're not going to care about uh, training. They're not going to care about any of that. They just want to do something useful with AI. That's how AI gets into the economy, increases the top line, increases margins. And that's what customers really pay for, right? So if you look at the technical requirements of this algorithm, it's just extraordinary how much quicker the FPGA was than anything else. And as I was saying, that just gives AMD a tremendous, tremendous advantage. How big can this business be? In my view, over the next five to seven, eight years, it's going to become a multi-hundred billion dollar business as physical AI goes mainstream. And you guys can go and check my written updates about this, the videos. I've been saying this for years. People just don't have a way to compete with this company. And and so this sort of illustrates, this, this gives you a concrete example of what I've been talking about, especially in the last few videos, which is analysts are just understanding this based on headlines. They are reacting to news, but they're not understanding profoundly what's going on. So today in the pre-market, as I'm recording this, this stock is trading at like $260. That is absolutely peanuts. Of course, we know that stocks um, go up and down driven by narratives. So at the moment, we have a bullish narrative emerging. Fundamentals will have to accompany the the stock over the next year or two or three to make th this increase sustainable. But it, what we're seeing is the platform just slightly come to fruition. And I just can't. I wish. I wish I could try. Um, I, I I wish I could check just whether I'm transmitting this effectively. You guys just don't know how important the FPGAs are going to be. How how valuable this piece of compute is. In, I think in the next five to six, seven years, the world is going to look very different. Devices are going to be intelligent. We're going to have driverless cars. All of this is going to make its way into medicine. We're going to see so much, so much automation. And just the, the key piece is the FPGAs. So extremely bullish. As many of you know, I've been long this company since $4.2 per share. So I'm a decade-long AMD investor. And I think that this story is just getting started. I think this is going to be massive. Um... And, and it, you know, it's it's not even driven by enthusiasm itself. Like It's nice to see the stock price go up. But you guys have seen me defending this company and this stock for years when everyone just didn't care about this company. So let me just remind you that six months ago, people were saying Lisa Su was DEI, which is really impressive, right? So what I continue to bring here to the channel and, and, and in these videos is an understanding of the platform. I hope you guys go and read about FPGAs today. I'm going to be doing a written update of this thing because it's just so extraordinary. I was expecting somewhat of an outperformance with FPGAs in terms of latency, but I wasn't expecting something so extraordinarily technical and hard to achieve. And then whether they make money with this or not, it's just about are you able to infuse your lineup with FPGAs? And the answer is yes. That's why AMD's AI PCs are picking up. They really are just a CPU with an FPGA slapped on top. So anyways, guys, very, very, very bullish, extremely bullish. I think this is going to be a $1,000, $2,000 stock over the next five years. Um, I was talking to some people about this over the weekend, and they were like, do you think AI is real? Do you think this, that, data centers, iron, energy? And I said, don't think of this in terms of labels. Just look at the demand for compute on the logarithmic scale on the y-axis since computers were invented. What you see essentially is a perfectly straight line. AI or not, it's just all about the ability to combine serial and parallel compute to bring a total cost of ownership to advantage to customers as new AI workloads emerge. That is what is so huge about AMD. Lisa Sue is just a beast. 
She's one of the best CEOs on the planet. Top five for me, absolutely. And I think that the world has been so drastically underestimating her for the past four to five years. She's built a monster. Like I think this, these are going to be very, very fun years for AMD shareholders. I think it's just going to be tremendous. I mean, this we're seeing now is almost just a little bit of froth driven by narratives, headlines. The fundamentals are so, so, so strong. I'm incredibly bullish on this. I don't think you've ever seen me being like this on camera, but it's, I mean, just this, this platform is so tremendously powerful. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I hope you now understand why I've been so bullish on FPGAs for years and on the signing acquisition. And, and, you know, I think it's now it's going to be a really fun time. We're just going to watch it unfold and I'm looking forward to earnings, which I'll be covering. Absolutely. Anyways, guys, thank you very much for joining me. As always, if you enjoyed this update in this video, could you please share this with someone else? These deep dives and updates are for free. And so the only way this grows is with your help. Thank you very much in advance. Take care and see you next time.